Hey everybody, this is uh, Mr. Munson, Chapter 5, Triangle Relationships. Today we're looking at uh, section, or concept number 4, Pythagorean Theorem Converse. And basically, um, we're going to be able to look at uh, a triangle like this with three sides given, and we're going to be asked what type of triangle it is. And we're going to be a lot more sophisticated because we're in high school than just looking at it and saying, I believe that's a right triangle. We're going to have to have some tools to prove it because we work off, off of facts. Okay, so let's move forward and make sure we understand this. All right, well, let's start first with making sure you understand what the Pythagorean theorem is. It basically says if a triangle is a right triangle, so we know there's a right angle, and the sides are A, B, and C, those are lengths, like 5, 3, and 4, whatever, C being the hypotenuse, then the formula A squared plus B squared equals C squared is true. Okay, so um, as you can see in my drawing, I have a right triangle because there's a right angle symbol over in that one corner. Across from it is uh, side C. And that's a measurement of C. And so I'd need to make sure if I was given a list of sides that I'd always put the largest side on the hypotenuse in the C spot. Okay? All right. So, you know, here we are finding the missing side of a right triangle. You know, I got a 3 and a 5 given the 5's on the hypotenuse. I got an X to be found. So I would use the Pythagorean theorem to solve this. So go ahead and put me on pause, copy that note. See if you can do the work without copying it. See if you can actually, you know, set up the equation and do it. Okay? So let's just review something real quick. We classify triangles by certain names, you know, scalene, isosceles, equilateral. So if I ask you to, to classify a triangle by its sides, you give me one of those choices from the side list. And then if I ask you to classify it by angles, then you classify it by the, the right-hand side list, okay? One from each should be given, okay, if possible. All right, so make sure you understand what those three are or what those two lists are before you move on. Uh, those are vocabulary words that we've been working with for a while, so make sure you got them. So here, uh, looking at the Pythagorean Theorem Converse, it basically says that if I find out that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, I take the three sides of a triangle that are given, I plug it in there, and it actually works, the left side equals the right side, then we conclude that it's a right triangle, okay? Now, suppose it didn't turn out to be a right triangle or it didn't work, then um, we would want to be able to classify it as something different. So here's our first example. Is the following triangle a right triangle? If not, classify it as something else. Well, first of all, from the side list, I know it's scalene because all three sides are different. But let's see if we can determine if it's right or something different. All right, so I'm setting up the Pythagorean theorem. Notice I put a question mark there because I don't know if they're equal. Now, some students will not put that, tri that uh, question mark there, even though I'm specifically saying that you need to, and they will struggle with this. And it's because they choose not to follow me. They choose to do it some other way. So I'm going to encourage you to put that, tri that uh, question mark there, make sure that you're following along with me. Okay, so let's check to see if this works. All right, there we have it. Indeed, it is a right triangle because the left side equals the right. So yes, it's a right triangle. Okay? Okay, so good looking back at the list. If we were to find out that it wasn't a right triangle, and we could certainly look at the sides. If all three sides were the same, then we would know it's equilateral, but we know that these two are the same. So if I saw a triangle sides given to me like a 3-3-3 three, three, three or something like that, then I, I would know it's an equilateral triangle. So, you know, first up, you know, if I saw three sides, I don't need to use the Pythagorean theorem converse. I just simply say it's an equilateral. Okay, so that's not necessarily a choice either. We find out that it's not a right triangle because the Pythagorean theorem didn't work. So it's one of these two, okay? So now what we need to do is be able to identify which one it is. All right, so if it's not a right triangle and it's not an equal angular triangle, then it must be either what? What are our two choices? I just told you this. I want your brain to think and wrap around it on your own. Put me on pause if you need to and write down what other choices are there. Yep, you got it. It's either obtuse or it's acute. Those are my only two leftover choices, okay? Now, a real common right triangle that I've used over and over is the 354. So this is what I know. I know the 354 is a right triangle. If I see that, I'm not using Pythagorean Theorem Converse. I just know it is. Okay, so let's take a look at these three sides. Let's plug it into the Pythagorean Theorem. Make sure you always put the largest side, not the last one, but the largest side in the C squared spot. Okay, so let's do this one. All right, did you remember to put your question mark in there? All right, so I start, after I do that, I find that 25 is not equal to 36. So I'm going to write it as an inequality. Tw 25 is smaller 
than 36. Okay, so what we find out is that that six that I used for the hypotenuse turns out it's too big to be a hypotenuse. All right, so I moved my inequality to the other side, so I have some room here. But suppose I had a right triangle, and it was a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. Now I know that's a right triangle. What I'm looking at here is when I made the hypotenuse a 6, it stretched it out, not to the 5, but to a 6. And so what ends up happening is that that side that's a 3 ends up being kind of tilted over to match it, okay? And, of course, that stays a 3. The five um, or the six blue line would have to kind of fall down to meet that three. But take a look what happened to my 90 degree angle. It opened up and became an obtuse triangle. So whenever we end up in a case where a squared plus b squared is too small or is less than what the c squared is, then we find out that the c squared or the c in this case is too big, and that forces it to be an obtuse triangle. Okay, so that's what this shape is. If I drew it or uh, made it three, six, four, makes it an obtuse triangle. All right, how about this one? All right, so let's set this one up. Go ahead and put me on pause, see if you can run this one out. All right, so what we find out here is that the C, the C is too small to make it to 25. So we ended up with uh, it being too small, okay? And in this case, it's an acute triangle, okay? So, whenever a squared plus b squared is bigger than what c squared is, it's an acute triangle. All right, quick one again. Here we go. Go ahead and uh, do these problems. Make sure you do these on a different paper than you did 5.4 or 5.3. Um, make sure you have your title at the top and all that stuff. Bring it in the next class. Let's get 100 on this.